Well, we're on a roll here. And uh, there, are just, there are just a lot of victories that have been delivered to us this year that we don't have time to talk about. You've heard several of them, and that's wonderful. But we are moving into a new dimension. I've spent a lot of time in the last few days just asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say of that which is coming and that which is going to happen? We can see what has already taken place, especially when, like we've heard some of it tonight. We can see some of that, but we want to understand, Lord, where are we going? What is coming? And I said, I, I, I pray that you will give me wisdom and give me revelation on what I can say is coming this year. And he said, you and the city will be amazed at what I accomplish in land, buildings, and many families. Many who have left the church will be returning because of the regular outpouring of my spirit that will bring a new spirit to mature those that I will touch with a new anointing and calling on their families. Then he went on to say, and I, these, these come, it came at different times because I would go back into my study at home and I'd begin to just say, Holy Spirit, I, I need full manifestation of what is taking place. He said, I will bring a refreshing of new awareness of my presence in this city and in this region. Those who have dried up will rise to new levels of my power like they've never experienced before. That may be some of you out there. I would expect that. Then he went on later to say, the Holy Spirit will descend in such powerful ways that some who are not familiar with his power will become fearful and uneasy. But soon they will see it is my hand and my spirit moving, and they will overcome their uneasiness, and they will begin to experience what they have never known before. Get ready, I'm going to release and enlarge my gifts in the body of the church. The gifts. I had to look then for the church, the, 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 the gifts that he was talking about. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11, these words. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away with these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls you a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. These are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And he said to me, this will be a year of great advancement for Faith Center. He said, my angels will continue to stand over Faith Center to guard against spiritual confusion. He said, the enemy has tried to let his voice be heard and followed, but I have not allowed the confusion. You are protected by my angels. I've had a number of people tell me they saw angels on the platform, some around the building. I was sitting in my study at home this afternoon and talk, just talking to the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, I want to be right in the center of your plan for me. And he said, you already are. And I'm watching the spiritual tide rising. 
You should not be surprised because it is my answer to your heart's cry. That's what we as a body of believers in prayer meetings, all kinds of gatherings that we've had, that's been the cry of the church, God. That's why we call Sunday night services Sunday night pour out. No, no stay on a track idea. It's open our hearts and let Holy Spirit speak and act as only He can do. The spiritual body, He said, our faith center is growing daily, and you will soon see the results of my anointing being poured out in a large manifestation. Now, as he spoke all of this to me, I've said, Lord, we have prayed for an outpouring. He said, it's already here, and it will soon break loose with very large manifestation. Soon break loose. With that, I was so grateful. I said, Lord, the thing we want more than anything is that the Holy Spirit manifests. Let me just say that in many churches, the Holy Spirit is never recognized, never expect Him to do anything in the service because we'll use our wisdom to preach, teach, and so on. And I'm saying that I don't want that kind of a church. I want a Holy Spirit filled, anointed church that rises to a new level of victory in their personal lives and in their family lives and in their f financial lives. In every department of their life, they walk in a whole new dimension because God has become so real. He becomes the dwelling place of us to walk in day by day. I'm saying to you that I believe we are, we are moving toward things that we have had prophesied for years. We've had prophets who've come to Chicago and, and declared that Illinois was a, an apostolic state. I can tell you that the apostolic influence and the apostolic movement has become stronger in the past year than it was ever before because it is intensifying and go, as it continues to move on. As we watch that happen, look out because God is going to be pulling some of you that are on the fringes of some of this activity and he's, he's going to feel some energy in your heart that's drawing you and then he's going to move by a spirit to drive you to another level in your life. We don't want the outside to take over until the inside has risen to a new level of authority and of His grace. And as that happens, he, and he said that, that will be pouring out very, very soon. As I left this afternoon from my study, just had been praying for some time about it. As I left this afternoon, I said, Lord, we just want you. What the Holy Spirit can do in 10 minutes is better than what a group of people can do in a whole day. Why? Because he touches the reality of time, energy, wisdom, direction. And in the areas where people are saying, I'm not sure which way to go here. I'm not sure just how to handle this. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is rising up to instruct you, teach you, and then carry you into that new dimension. And, and don't let it slip. Rise in that. There's no limitation to it. There's no stopping it. You don't have to slow down or anything. You rise to it. And, and then rejoice in it. Rejoice in it. I believe some of the prophetic words that have been given that haven't been re-mentioned tonight have always, already instructed us of things that were coming in the coming period of time. I hate to say in, the, in, the, in the, this year because we're already at the end of this year. And I don't want to say in 2020 because I believe 2020 will be the introduction to a massive flow. And I think by 21, we will look back at 20 and say, oh, if we'd only known. 
if we'd only known, our expectations would have been much stronger. We would have been anticipating more. We would have been reaching for it more, but we didn't understand. And I'm saying, God, reveal an understanding to your people of Faith Center like they've never heard, never understood. They, they've taken a lot of things for granted, but I pray that you will restore a mighty anointing upon every single person that walks through that door, even if they're not a believer. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will drive their heart to draw closer to Him. Walk in His power. Walk in His anointing so that you don't make the mistakes you make by your own choices. You make the decisions based on what you know He's already directed you to do. And by the way, just spend time to let Him speak to you. That's what we're going to need. As we move into this coming year, I was, again, another one of the things I was saying, Lord, is there somebody that you would like me to invite that has a particular kind of ministry that would really bring a new dimension into Faith Center? He says, no, it's already here. He said, it's already here. So I gave up starting to look around, see if there was somebody that would do a new shaking or a new stirring. And I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for bringing me back to see. He said, it's already here. I feel like I'm 100 feet in the air. And I'll do, I'll do my best to come back down There's the, and get in, involved. Now, as we look at this coming year with these things that God is promising, I think each one of us have to say, Lord, how do I fit into that pattern? Because everyone will be a part of it. Everyone will be drawn into that new dimension in a new way. So that's when you have to say, Lord, here I am. I say that often. I say, Lord, here I am. If I'm missing something, show me right now. If there's something that needs to be accomplished, show me right now. And I'll move it. Because I want to see things begin to shake. I believe the coming of the Lord is soon. And yet I see so many that don't know the Lord. And I say, Lord, we need a little more time yet to get them into the kingdom. And then it's almost as if he said, I'll come when I'm ready. <laughs> and that isn't a bit surprising to me. Because he knows best. He knows when things are ready and when it's past time and ready to go. But my plea with each of you is just don't think this is for Apostle Lion or Apostle Bird or any of the other pastors in the church to, to move us into that. It's every single one of us that will move this into the next dimension. And your anticipations is your faith at work that will bring the revelation to you to have what you can do, what, what part you can play in doing this. Joining with a prayer group, joining with a, a, a ministry team, whatever it may be. Just let God begin to speak to you. When you go to bed tonight, lying on your pillow, TV isn't on. It's too late. You're normally in bed by nine. It's too late for that. But I want you just to, as you lie there, say, Holy Spirit, where do I fit in? I want to move into this and be a part of the whole body of the process. That's where my heart is. I want to tell you that if you begin to talk that way to the Holy Spirit, He will take hold of you and begin to drive your future for you. Drive your future for you. He is so faithful in all that we're doing. There were a number of other things that He said to me, but m many of them have already been spoken through other prophetic words. We have Ed Trout coming here on the 5th. I don't think that there's any mistake 
in the date that we set. I believe he's coming at the beginning edge of the new year to begin to declare some things to us that we haven't even thought of yet. That God will use him to bring to us for his reason. Even though God says it's already here, he will quicken it and bring it out and bring it into a new level for us. I'm confident of that. Uh, that came to me this afternoon. I believe the timing on that is so good at this time. But I think the real key to how it comes into place and flow is when each one of us in our individual prayer time listen to that still, small voice that you don't, it isn't something you hear with this ear. You hear it with the words that come into your mind. And those words are his voice talking to you. And you get to recognize that voice real clearly so that you can talk with the Holy Spirit anytime. He's always with you, so why not have a conversation? Especially when you're hungry. And he sees the hunger of your heart. He longs to pour that in. But when, I, when he talked about his angels that were going to be protecting us and that angels were going to be ministering to us, in ways, I thought, Lord, thank you so much for bringing a new revelation of what you want to be accomplished for your glory. We always.